G'day everybody, welcome back to another episode of Crafted by Tim. I know, weird angle, but that's because I have this thing sitting right behind me, and that's what we're going to be making today. It's a display case made completely, or well, more or less completely, out of recycled parts from other projects and such. So, so, so here it is, let, let me show you how to make it. So the first thing that I'm going to start off with for this... Ow. Ah, splinter. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to start off with for this is just a nice large piece of jar. And I'm going to make this into sides. So, I'm going to take some measurements. Once again, this is going to be one of those sorts of projects that I kind of just wing it and I, uh, I end up with something that resembles the thing that I was trying to go for to begin with. So this is 92 centimeters. Uh, in length, so that makes it easy. We are looking for 45, 46 point, no, just 46. Right there, right there is our half. All right, so from here, what we need to do is we need to start mapping out the general design of our box. Go up six centimeters on the side there. So now I have to figure out a way of cutting this down. There's a few different ways I can do it, but because I don't have a sled for my um, for the table saw, I'm probably going to opt for doing this on the band saw. Okay, so I just had an interesting idea, and this might actually work. Taking the, uh, the parts that I just cut off and holding them over the top of each other, they actually line up really quite close. And so much so that I would probably be able to, uh, to get this to work. It'd just be a matter of... So what I'll probably end up doing is grabbing some dowels. There's very few areas that I can actually fit a dowel. Let me just go grab a dowel. So I've got the thinner ones and then I've got the slightly thicker but slightly shorter ones. Actually, they're basically the same size. But using the shorter ones, I might be able to get a few in there. Alternatively, I'm not entirely sure how they're done, but I, I know that you can do bow tie, what, what are called bow tie joints. They're called that because it looks like there's like little bow ties set into the timber. Now, I'd have to do some research and figure out how they're done. But it could it could like be quite interesting to have something like that. Okay, so I learned something in that short period of time. Bow ties are quite difficult. I decided that I should be able to do sort of my own style of bow tie join. Now, bow tie joints don't, don't generally have to go very deep, but because this is going to be a panel in itself, I decided that it would probably be best. It. So, I'm going to find out exactly how I want this to sit. I'm going to clamp it up so it's not going to move at all. I'm then going to trace these um, pieces of, I think this is, um, I think these are Australian ash or possibly Australian oak. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace these directly to this. I'm going to cut it out on the bandsaw and hopefully this works. If it doesn't, well then I guess we're going to just go back to what I was originally planning on doing, so yeah! Number two fits really nicely. Still a little bit of flex, but it's much, much better. Pretty well jam that one in there. Okay. I think I'm good to glue this off. Thank you. 
we we got some windows for the caravan. Um, they're made out of plexiglass. These are the old windows or offcuts or seconds or whatever, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and they're actually double layered. So on the outside here, you have a tinted side, and then on the inside, there's a clear side. So my plan is is to rip these down. I want to make this uh, to the biggest size that I need, and then just cut it down from there. But hopefully this should make it a little bit easier. So be warned that when doing this, it's going to smell really, really bad. So also wear eye protection. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut a rebate uh, in this. So what I have to do is I got to set my saw blade to the right height, which I believe it's already at. When closed, that can sit nice and flat uh, in my outside two pieces. And that way the only exposed area is going to be the hinge and because that's going to be facing to a wall or if you're a shop owner or anything like that that's going to be facing you so it shouldn't really matter too much you're not actually going to be able to see it okay so now I've got to do the same thing for these two so this wide and about 10 millimeters deep I think at this point in time, I really noticed that, you know, I'd actually stuffed up really bad. And with only such a short amount of time left in the build, I wasn't entirely sure whether or not it would be worth it to start again or try and come up with a solution. Crap. What Tim's done is he's accidentally cut the same side of both pieces of material, so the box doesn't actually fit together anymore. What I ended up doing was I ended up settling for cutting off about 20 millimeters off the end and then just doing the exact same thing that I was planning to do, but my box was going to be 20 millimeters shorter.
Okay, so now I have to do the same thing to fit my front piece. Another one of my tips is to, if, if, if you run out of room on one of your benches, drop the blade on your table saw. There you go, new blade. Okay, so I could say, you know, oh, it worked fine, I didn't have to do any sort of adjustments to it or anything like that, and I'm, I'm an absolute legend that can do this first time, every time. In actuality, I'm not. I'm not a professional carpenter in any standard, so still not quite there, but it's there enough that I, um, I'm just going to continue to work on it as I go, and hopefully I'll be able to get it a lot closer by the time this project is finished. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to put in this thing. Um, so I'm going to measure out how high I want the shelf to be. Okay, so I've got the holes transferred. Okay, so after much, much more sanding, we're pretty close. Still a little bit of a lip here, but what I want to start working on now is the uh, base, which should be relatively easy, as long as this is still square. Uh, and if it isn't square, it's going to be like 
off by a few millimetres, so I'm not too concerned as of right now. Oh wow, would you look at that? 31. 0.5 millimeters. So we'll just go 31 millimeters that way, and we're looking at 41 millimeters the other way. 40.1, 40 40.1. 40 okay, so I want to add some extra support to the bottom because right now I've only got about 5 mil to, um, to glue to. So what I want to do. Now I've cut these to about 10 degrees. These are still the off cuts from the rest, trying to conserve materials and all the rest of it. Um, so I've got my spacer here, and that's exactly where I'm going to glue these down. This is a big old heavy hunk of, I believe it's Jarrah, but I'm not entirely sure. So what I'm going to do is, uh, this is going to become the frame for Perspex or Plexiglass or whatever it is. Uh, this is 30 millimeters wide, do two cuts of uh, 20 millimeters thick. Flat end just sits straight into there. It will just go to just like that. So that's probably like the easiest join ever, because <laughs> um, you only have to actually have to do work to one side. Okay, so I made a little, 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 little mistake again. The frame was too big for the box. So to fix this, well, here's what I did. It was mainly too big via the length, so I figured I could try and cut these on a 45 and then rejoin them to make the box the right size, but making sure to try and try and hide the join as best as possible. Or I could extort the join and use it as a bit more character. So that's what I ended up doing. So first I found the exact center of the length and I made a mark. I then made a 45 degree mark going all the way through that center. I then found out how much I, I needed to remove and then added that to the thickness of the filler material and then divided that by two. If it didn't divide evenly by two, I just added a millimeter because it's not going to be overly precise as there's going to be a little bit of overhang anyway. I then uses, uh, used that number, using my original 45 degree angle, I then marked a opposing 45 degree angle, and then on that 45 degree angle, I marked exactly half the distance that I needed to take away plus my filler material. I then cut it down on the drop saw, on a 45, cut my shio to size, and then just glued it back together.
Guess who made another mistake? What I really should have done, uh, and it all just comes down to thinking about these things and trying not to rush. But what I should have done was I should have cut a 5mm rebate into all these pieces before I assembled them. Didn't do that. So that means that I would have to use the router roundabout now to cut a 5mm rebate into all the sides. Unfortunately, however, I don't actually have the bit for the router. There's two ways that I can do this. I can do this by hand, which is going to take a little while, and I'd, I'd um, use a hammer and chisel, and I cut a 5mm rebate into all the sides. And this is for my um, glass, my uh, the, the plexiglass or whatever it's called. So I could do that by hand, or because this is still very, like, very close to the size of my actual box, I've only got this like really small, probably a five millimeter gap in there. I still have to get a lock in there. One of these. Nice old fashioned lock and it's already designed to work for this particular style of um, mechanism. I want to have that three millimeters there because it's just going to make this easier. So I need to extend these walls by about five millimeters on both sides top and bottom as well but only five millimeters short basically I'm just going to make an extra little wall right around the edge that's five millimeters shorter than this lid thickness and hopefully I'll be able to glue that in sand it flush we'll end up with something that looks pretty cool and pretty interesting Ah, dang it. I was gonna say it sits perfectly inside, but apparently now it doesn't want to. There we go. Sits nicely inside. I'm gonna use a scalpel. A scalpel and a few hammers, I mean a, a hammer and a few chisels to carve out a spot for this little lock. So I've got my center mark here. And I just have to figure out how far down it goes.
All right, now I have to get the other part of the lock. Find out exactly where it's going to sit. Actually, what I'll do is I'll grab a key. And I'll lock the top half of the lock in here. There go. It's in there. It does still move around. Close this. Press down just gently. Do I have two marks? Yes, I do. Aha. Okay, so I've got my right side marked. But that doesn't mean it goes like that. No, it means it goes like so. That's right facing upwards. So when I flip it over, it's now on the left side. some more routering. I don't like routering. It's scary. Check out this cool box. It's router things. So we have Is this one? Yeah okay so I've got the Roman Kogri edge and we're just going to sort of make this slightly more decorative around the edges. Okay so it's just doing a test piece. I learnt a few things. There was a little bit of chipping on this side, but it looks like I ended up taking it out for the second pass. Don't have very much burning at all, which is awesome. You just have to take it really slow, real careful. So the chipping, that was because I was changing direction of grain without the cutter. So the cutter's rotating like that, I think. And then when it gets to here, it does a rotation and just goes soop, and just strips out that chunk. Here you can see the exact same thing is going to happen if I'm coming down this way. I have to start somewhere in the middle of this one and I'll just come straight back, take off the corner and then I'll come back along this slide. So my intention is to probably start, because I have one of those joins at every corner, start somewhere in the middle, somewhere off to this side, go right along, then turn this 90 degrees and they go right along again. The other thing that I, uh, that I was told to do is because this has a guard most of the way around, I can use my hand to help stabilize it. So running it right along there. And that will help me from tilting it too much this way. Lots of learning, lots of hoping that this is going to work. So that actually worked out really nice. Aside from a few spots, there's a little bit of a raise and a little bit of a few high spots, a few low spots. But overall it worked out quite nicely. Now I have to go back in and make sure that uh, just with a bit of sandpaper and hopefully I'll be able to um, remove some of these rough spots.
So this is the stuff that I'm going to be using for the central shelf. Now I am going to leave it removable, that way I have a, uh, a larger compartment if I need be, if it needs, if it, if it needs the larger compartment. Wow. And what this is, is it's, it's Perspex with a, uh, there's a plain white side on one side, and then there's a, uh, a nice marble side on the other. The nice thing about Perspex is, as you can see, it's incredibly thin, strong. The only problem with it is it looks really clean. So if I want to put something inside it that's sort of rustic looking, it probably wouldn't like fit the aesthetic too well. So I do have a solution for that, but first let's cut out our um, shelf thing and get it to fit. It fits in there quite nicely, uh, nice and snug, not a problem. I'm going to leave this piece of tape on there, uh, as well as this tape, just so it's nice and easy to remove and I don't have to open up the box from the bottom. And this to help protect it, because on this side, and you can see there's quite a few scratches on it. And I'm not sure how many of those go past the plastic, but regardless, I do want to try and protect it as best as possible. So now we're basically done, we're just going to do the final glue up. Whilst this is drying, I'm going to give it about 24 hours to dry. I'm going to be just basically going over everything else. So we've completely disassembled the box. Um, well, for the most part, I'm going to leave this like that, just to make things a little bit easier on me. I'm probably either going to use this clear timber varnish, so it's a nice satin finish. Either that, or I might use this uh, polyurethane. Not entirely sure which one I want to go for, but we got a clear vault, uh, gloss or satin. I don't know. Maybe I should ask you guys. Looks like we're going with clear gloss. On uh, the Facebook page, basically just said, G'day guys, working on a woodwork project, yada yada yada. And I want to know what your opinion for a finish, clear gloss or a satin finish. And with an outstanding two votes for clear uh, gloss, it looks like clear gloss is the clear winner. Also, if you guys want to get in on uh, further votes, you will find a link in the description to my Facebook page where you can vote on, uh, you know, upcoming projects as well as little sneak peeks and such. As of right now, we have a, uh, a pretty nice satin finish on it, but it's not the gloss, high gloss finish that we're after. And the way that we're going to achieve this is, I've got most of the sides covered, I just have to do the underside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let it, dr uh, let it dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. I will then flip it over, do the underside, do the underside of the, um, of the frame, and then after that I can go on to letting it dry for a full three to four hours, and then I'll use some 240 grit sandpaper, we're going to use some 240 grit, we're going to um, sand over the entire thing, then what I'll do is I'll apply a second coat uh, and I might see about doing a third coat as well.
so there you have it. That was actually quite enjoyable. Uh, and I reckon it's going to suit my needs perfectly. I'm really sorry about the uh, length of this video. Uh, it, it did take a lot longer than what I expected, and just looking at the footage now, it, it's a pretty, pretty lengthy video. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do. So remember to stay safe, happy crafting, and as always, cheers.